These are the smallest trout I've seen in cat's age. Hey, now don't beat up the size. Not all of us have a choice in this world to be big. <laughs> well, they gotta have big brothers around somewhere. adventures, we'll spend the day fishing with two of South Florida's top anglers. When these two aren't out chasing records or trophies and just want to get away and have a fun day on the water, where do they go? Since Florida is the fishing capital of the world, the options are unlimited. But for Captain Rick Murphy and Pat Ford, the answer is easy. It's the Everglades National Park and Flamingo, of course. There's no fishing hole quite like Flamingo. This remote outpost is located on the southernmost tip of the Florida Peninsula, where the mangrove marshlands meet the great estuary of Florida Bay. You can catch fish here on just about any given day. Snook, redfish, and tarpon are the main attractions, but don't forget about the sea trout, one of Florida's most reliable and delectable fish. For many years, the trout has been Florida's number one most sought-after inshore game fish. And thanks to the state's strong conservation effort, the trout population remains strong. There are numerous potholes and small channels that lie within a few miles of the Flamingo Dock, and they hold huge numbers of trout year-round. These trout don't run as large as those caught on Florida's central coast, but on a cool winter day like today, the action should be hot. Rick, where's this deep spot now the fish are hiding in? Well, what you have, Pat, is you got these, this channel, and in the middle of the channel, there's a flat. And as the flat starts to taper up from the channel walls, you know, it kind of comes to a point. And these fish are staging on the upcurrent side of that flat. What is that in English? I mean, over here? Yeah, Okay. exactly. These are the smallest trout I've seen in cat's age. Hey, now don't beat up the size. Not all of us have a choice in this world to be big. <laughs> Uh, they got to have big brothers around somewhere. You know, Pat, what's the biggest trout that you've ever caught? I got one of these things, actually, it was eight pounds one time. No. And, An eight pounder? Uh, yeah, and it was just incredible. Thought it was a baby tarpon. They've got a, this guy's not really big enough, big enough to see the uh, mouth on it, but it was, they really got quite a mouth. They've got an impressive teeth, teeth set up on the top. This guy's only got one. But they eat everything. There's a little, a little guy to go after a big jig. You know those fangs? They break off. There's like shark's teeth. They break. Oh, here's a fish back. Oh yes. There we go. And the thing is, there was one following this one. Yeah, I got another one too. Do you? Yeah. They're starting to get active now with their. But the thing is, and what's so cool about them is that. Uh, that fang will break off and it'll grow back. They'll grow back another one. <laughs> They're getting smaller. Could be good. That's all right. That current picks up. It's, it's taking a little time to start going against that wind, you know? God, fish. But I think the fishing will get better. There. Look See, at the differences in the color of the spot. See his teeth? Look how teeth yours is real, real dark, spotted. And this one, oh. Give them a head. They're beautiful fish. This one's very lightly spotted. Beautiful fish. And they got a mouth and they think they can eat anything. Yeah. That's a big mouth. See the difference in the color of the yeah. spots. You're Mine's really pretty dark. Yeah. They're also cool. small. Oh, Pat! Uh, There's a trout! I had a hit. Are they close in, Rick, or are they farther out towards the bank there? Oh, probably 60, 70 feet. Right there at 9 o'clock to the, to the boat. All right. You know, Pat, these fish are great in the fact that, you know, you bring Ridge and Colin or your grandkids out here and 
put a popping cork on and tell them to watch the cork and you pop it a couple times and next thing you know, you know you're catching trout every cast. They're very kid friendly. Very kid friendly. This is an easy way to spend a day actually just in the channels. You know, flopping around with the little fish, you catch jacks. Once in a while, you get a redfish, <laughs> snook mixed in it. Mm -hmm. Get the trout, but the, if you can find that concentration of trout, you can pop them on every other cast, even though we're not doing it at the moment. Exactly. Oh, hey, cool that one out from underneath you, Columbia shoes, Patrick. Right out from underneath you, kids. These are the smallest trout concentrations I've hey, seen. Hey, but you know what? The future in the resource looks like it could be bright, you know? That was one of the things that was so neat when they were changing all the laws in the trout fishing, Pat. I remember when the fish had to be 10 inches in order to harvest the fish. And when they, uh, every fish you caught was nine and three quarters. And then when it went to 11 inches, everything was 10 and 3 quarters, and then when they made it 12, everything was 11 and 3 quarters, and 14 and so on, now everything's right up to that size. So now we're back to the 6 inch fish. Yeah, maybe okay. they changed the law last <laughs> night, I didn't know. The that. big ones all ate them. All the big ones are being harvested. We still haven't found the mother load of these things. Could be up in front of the boat a little ways. Oh, there's another one. What are you talking about, Pat? You're catching them every cast. You're catching on every cast, so well, they're getting smaller. That's hey, about the size I've been catching. It's all in how you wiggle your worm. Obviously. That's why I'm the guy and I make the big money. That's why they're successful. You bouncing that on the bottom, Rick, or are you moving it in the middle? Oh, you know. No, I would be asking you <laughs> if I knew. <laughs> it's Actually, another trade can, secret now. Well, no, I just love to tell you, but I can't. Working walk. the rod tip down, making sure that it's tipped with a shrimp. That's all. Look at, look at the size of that fish, Rick. That thing's 30 inches long, probably. Oh, my goodness. And look at the current. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Florida, the fishing capital of the world. Yamaha, when you want the best. Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Rapala Line, premium fishing line crafted from experience. Maverick, fish the legend. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. Hummingbird, simply, clearly, better. Almost 1,200 miles of coastline, 12,000 miles of rivers and streams, nearly 8,000 lakes over 10 acres, over 700 world records, and 3.4 million anglers a year. In fact, anglers outnumber golfers two to one. Whether you're casting a plug along the shore or trolling the blue waters of the Gulf Stream, you're enjoying a vast outdoor resource. Relax, get closer to nature, and spend time with friends and family. Go fishing, right here in the fishing capital of the world. Yamaha's Big Block V6 Four Strokes. Everything you want when you're miles offshore. Everything and more. Up to 250 ocean conquering horses. More than enough top end muscle to move the big boats. Yamaha Turn the Key Reliability translates to confident starts. Quiet, clean burning performance. Smooth, powerful acceleration and cruise all day fuel efficiency. Yamaha, reliability starts here. You know, I fish all over the world in over 300 days a year on the water. And as a matter of fact, I spend more time on the water than on dry land. If it swims in salt water, I catch it. Out here, where the fish are big and mean, your lures really take a beating. To survive, they must be tougher than the fish you are. Backcountry to blue water, my choice in lures is simple. All over the world, big fish eat little fish that swim like a rapala. It takes a little more to make it out here. It's about guts, standing up to the elements, and quietly doing the job when others have long gone home. It takes Riptide, the toughest, most corrosion-resistant trolling motor ever built. When your reputation's on the line, hang it on Riptide, only from Minn Kota. 
I fish tournaments to win, period. And my boat helps me do that. I gotta run longer, faster, harder than anyone else, day after day, every day. My Hughes is designed by anglers that actually build boats to do that. These guys are driven. If they can satisfy my needs, they can satisfy yours. So, who's going to build your next gift? Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, Flat Skiffs, Tunnel Skiffs, and Bay Boats. Maverick Boat Company, angler driven. Pat Ford has been practicing law since 1968 and is one of Miami's premier trial attorneys. When you can't find Pat at the courthouse, you can bet that he'll be in some fish's house because fishing is what he truly loves to do. Rick and Pat are longtime friends and have shared many fishing adventures together. From giant tarpon to Pacific sailfish to Bahama bones, they've caught them all. There he is, Pat. All right. All right, he's a little bigger. At least they're averaging a little bit more now. Maybe we're getting, uh, moving up to the third or fourth grade here in the schools. <laughs> getting out of daycare. Those are pretty fish, Rick. They're, they're so much different than the, than the freshwater fish, the freshwater trout that, you know, I grew up catching. Remember we went to Brigadoon a bunch of years ago up in North Georgia to catch freshwater trout? Absolutely. That was a really neat place. Have you ever seen anything like that? I've never really seen anything that had or any stream that had trout that were that big. And a lot of it's because it's private water and they take care of them, but the fish were, were enormous. We got a lot of 20 inch plus fish. I think the biggest one we got was like over 30 inches. I remember. And uh, I remember. they're all on fly rods and, and that's really one of the best places I've ever been to trout fish. Yeah, it was really a cool place. You do have a big one, Pat. Yes, oh, no, that's a, this is a real that one. That is a nice fish. Well, come on, Pat, get your line on your reel and well, fight the fish. three feet get in your, front of me get here. Get the tip out of the tree. That's the problem. He's just sitting here. Reel down and pull on him. Well, I'm pulling. There he goes. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> I've got to have my strike indicator up on the, come here, fish. <laughs> I can't even get this guy, this is a big fish. I can't even get him to get, a, there he goes. Whoa, look at him. Look at him. That's a fish. Now this is a <laughs> this is a Brigadoon rainbow. <laughs> Pat, don't let him go down to the bottom of the. No, he's hitting. Don't let him go down to the rock okay. ledge, Pat. Pat, be a man and pull on the fish. Well, I'm not the one that's connecting it. It's the. Be a man. It's the tippet. It's the tippet. Look at all the other ones running out of there. This is where it gets hairy, Richard. This is where it gets hairy. Come on, fishy. This is hairy enough to have a beard. <laughs> Come on. Now don't start talking about your ex-girlfriends. <laughs> Man, what a rainbow. Pat, I don't think, look at all the rainbows in that hole. <laughs> yes, there's a few fish in here. So the water's oh, real my low. Goodness. The water's real low, so they're all concentrating in these holes. In the spring, they're spread out a little more. I don't get the general impression that this guy's particularly tired. I just enjoy the moment, man. You're really messing up my hole, I want you to know, though. All the fish running out of there. Um, Come over this way, Pat. I, I can't come very far. Yeah, just come right here. This is a really good spot right here to land the fish. Oh, oh my right. gosh. All right. Where's your camera, Ford? <sighs> now, now this is a fish. <laughs> this is a Brigadoon fish. Okay. He's all tangled up in the line now. Yeah. What are all those little spots on? Ick. Ick? Ick. What is Ick? Ick is something I used to get in my tropical fish tank. Uh -huh. Same thing? Some warm water. Seeds. Oh, okay. And it flies in the net. Good. Just leave it. Just let's, let's get the fish up. This fish is 12, 13 pounds. No, 
Is he really that big? Where did I get him out? Okay, I got the net. I thought it was a bone fish you caught. Look 20. at his tail. His oh, tail's all chewed up, isn't it? Well, mad patty bit. Look, okay. look at the size of that fish, Rick. That thing's 30 inches long, probably. Oh, my goodness. And look at the girl. Probably 20 inches in girth. <laughs> and now he's free. Yep. Pat. You said they were the big ones here. I think that, what, when was that fish weight-wise? Yeah, 13, 14 good, pounds? Yeah, 12, 13 pounds. 13, 14 pounds. It'll we'll be 18 pounds by the time we get back to Miami. You know what? Hey, don't Miami. try this in salt water. It's not safe. Don't try it in salt water. I'm retired for the day now. You need to. Because I can't get the fish as long as you're in the daggone river. <laughs> got me, he got me all wet. Pat has traveled the world in search of top-notch game fishing, Alaska to Africa, Central to South America. Pat is also a prolific outdoor writer and photographer. And in fact, he's writing a book about his exotic fishing travel experiences. That's it. Of all the places that he's traveled, Florida still remains his yeah, number good. one favorite spot to fish. We're being outsmarted by the trout, Rick. <laughs> They're probably moving up and down this bank laughing at us. Look, let's make them cast over there for a while. Well, you know, and then we'll run up here. The one thing we haven't done is thrown on this side of the boat where the, the edge of that mountain is right here. Maybe they're over here. Let's see. Up, up, there we go. Uh oh. Another Pat, fish. Been, you have been very lucky to fish all over the world. I mean, Venezuela for white marlin back in the 70s. Was that 70s or the 60s? Uh, no, not that old. <laughs> white marlin were in the eight, was in the 80s. Now, and but I've gone to a lot of different places and really had a ball doing it. And uh, I finally, everybody kept saying, you know, why don't you? put this stuff in a book you know you go to the all these crazy places you catch these fish come back and write an article for a magazine for it and uh, why don't you put them all together so we can find it so I finally figured that would be probably a safe thing to do mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm talking with a couple of publishers I'm putting together a book and it's gonna be pretty much the different places I've fished but instead of just having a lot of pretty pictures I'm gonna try and make it so that anybody that picks up the book and reads it can figure out exactly how I plan my trip exactly the tackle to bring the, the time, of year, time to of year to go the lodge I went to if I liked it or at least the lodge I think is the best one and if there's a guide that you fished with you know exactly because I, I do you know I do a lot of research when I'm looking into going someplace so I really want to try to tell everybody my favorite places over 30 years of traveling around and uh, and how they can have the same exact trip well, I tell with you, a I minimum of you know effort I look forward to seeing it that's gonna be cool don't break your rod tip. He's a nice one. He's the best one of the day. This Conservation Minute is brought to you by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Florida, it's the fishing capital of the world with more than 700 world record catches. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission works hard to make sure Florida will be the world's fishing capital for years to come. It's recognized as an innovator in managing habitat and species resources for their long-term well-being and the benefit of people. And we're pretty successful. You are an important part of Florida's success in this area, but we need your continued support. And there are many ways you can help. Here's one of the easiest, one that's fun. Go fishing and when you do, take a kid with you. Through the Take a Kid Fishing Program, the FWC is dedicated to helping make it safe and easy for Floridians to go fishing and to ensure this rich fishing heritage is passed on to future generations. For more information on the fishing capital of the world, visit myfwc.com. Contender Boats, take it to the limit. Wherever you find fishing tournament winners, you'll find contender boat owners. First to the fishing grounds, first to the winner's circle. When you look for strength, versatility, and ocean ability, you find contender boats, hand-built, one by one, each and every one. 
Contender Boats is proud to introduce its new 23 Tournament Edition, the latest in true mid-size offshore fishing rigs. Contender is committed to providing outstanding quality and performance. Nothing else delivers. Expect the most. Contender Boats. If you're a boater, you know it's required by law to carry at least one life jacket for every passenger on board. Maybe you're thinking, I can swim, I don't need a life jacket. Consider that the leading cause of death in boating accidents is drowning, even though 96% of fatality victims were reported as being able to swim. New inflatable models of life jackets can be worn as a waist pack on a belt. For more information about life jackets and boating safety, visit myfwc.com. And remember, safe boating is up to you. Wouldn't it be great if you could snap on a lure and just go fishing with something that looks like and more importantly swims like the real thing? With lures that come pre-rigged with the best components available? With baits designed by people who fish all over the world? But most importantly, you tie these on your line, you're going to catch some fish. Humminbird 900 series will change the way you look at fishing. You get the extra dimension of 3D sonar, full chart plotting and GPS, and exclusive side imaging with a picture-like view of the bottom, all on an ultra-wide, high-definition display. The 900 series fishing system doesn't just perform on the water, it practically walks on it. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. Yamaha's Big Block V6 Four Strokes. Everything you want when you're miles offshore. Everything and more. Up to 250 ocean conquering horses. More than enough top end muscle to move the big boats. Yamaha Turn the Key Reliability translates to confident starts, quiet, clean burning performance, smooth, powerful acceleration, and cruise all day fuel efficiency. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Where else can you fish for over 50 species of game fish? Where have most world record fish been caught? Where are there more than 8,000 miles of coastline, 12,000 miles of rivers and streams, and 3 million acres of freshwater lakes and ponds? Florida, the fishing capital of the world. For more information, contact the commission office nearest you or go to myfwc.com. I got one. I got one. All right. Oh, boy, he hit right next to the boat. He was. He must have been following it in and yeah. brought it in. Pat. There's a nice little guy. Look at that. I love the way their fins pop up. Hold them, their fins pop right up. The color of that thing. That's good. Trout of That's trout. good. Come on, trout. There we go. And then their mouth perks open. They just oh, here's pose. one, Pat. Oh, Rick's got one, too. Wait a second. All right, hang on. All right, Rick. Let me get a picture of that one. I've been looking at these things, saying how nice they were, but... Yeah, here you got to get a camera. Where are you? I want to see a picture of him with this jig in his mouth, Pat. Okay. We'll bring him up on the side. Oh, this is a good one here. Don't break your rod tip. He's a nice one. He's the best one of the day. Yeah. All right. Well, let me hold him for you here. Get a picture of him in here. It's just real. Here. Hey, Pat, let's get a picture of this guy against this red jacket. That I got real it. I got it. Of rod. Put your reel up a little bit so I can see it. That's it. And put the fish up a little higher now. Up here? Yeah, that's good. You know, that's one of the things that people don't understand when you're doing that outdoor photography. Or if you're selling photos to magazines, you know, you gotta actually take a minute, take time, and really pose the fish, pose the reel, the make sure you get all the labels the way you want them, you know? <laughs> You're too commercial, Rick. <laughs> We're only in this for the artistry of the fish picture, not the commercials. Not over the water? Yeah, that's good. Point his head towards me now. I want to right down his throat. That's it. I love those teeth. Oh, this guy's got two big teeth, too. That's great. Two big fangs. Cool. I 
love those teeth. I yeah. love the mouth on these things. And they will eat anything. One more of the mouth. Damn it. Okay. You gotta get him back in the water there. I'll pop this jig out. Okay, hey, that's better. Get the faces. The cheesy smile. Lower him down a little bit. No, I want to be an adventure. Oh, you. Okay. Look, look at my mouth and his mouth. Only a mama could love those mouths. Oh, he looks good. All right, just get him one more time at me with the uh, the mouth, the teeth. And off he went. You know, Patrick, we've caught a lot of fish together. Trout, freshwater trout, tarpons, sailfish in Guatemala. It's always good to have you in the boat. It's fun. It's We're fun. Actually, it's Once in a while, we actually catch things, too. <laughs> it wouldn't be fair to finish this adventure without saying something about Rick and fishing in Flamingo. The two are synonymous. Rick considers Flamingo his home water. He grew up here, established his reputation here, and returns here whenever he feels a need to get back to basics, reflect on the past, and to plan for the future. We've shot many of our fishing shows here at Flamingo and feel lucky to return each time. And to share this experience with a friend and a fellow angler like Pat Ford, it's made this another great sportsman's adventure.